Welcome back to segment four of Citizens Forum. And we have with us today John Farcarson, uh, who uh, does a show right here on Shaw called CRD in Context. And uh, we plunked John over on the other chair today, and we're going to just pick his brains a little bit to just to try to give us an update on what's happening with this sewage treatment in Victoria yeah. and uh, give us an idea of where you think it's heading now that we have some new developments. And uh, basically, maybe we should just get into asking you, you know, the um, provincial government now has <clears throat> stepped in. They've now appointed a board, right. I believe, that's going to be a board of expert, an expert panel that's going to right, be working on the proposals. You have to be careful with the word expert. Okay. <laughs> First. Expert, expert panel. <clears throat> and uh, they're going to come back to the CRD with their options, let's say. And then the CRD still is in the driver's seat, still able to make the decisions. Is that how it is? Well, on paper it is, because if you look at the terms of reference, they're about eight pages. And as you go through the terms of reference, it's clear that the, the project panel has, has control for everything. They've even taken control, essentially they've taken control of zoning, yeah. because they were confronted on that. And uh, the uh, facilitator, uh, Mr. Milburn, said, no, there are other legislative pieces that can more or less override looking local zoning. Uh, so basically if that panel comes to the CRD and says, okay, you're going to put this pipeline or whatever down this street, the, the CRD doesn't have to worry about it. They know that the province is just going to make it happen. Well, if they say no, then as, as, Mayor, as Director Helps, Mayor Lisa Helps of Victoria, has said uh, that um, if they say no, they're going to have to go back to the taxpayers and say we just lost $500 million in uh, senior provincial and uh, federal level funding, each right. of them being in for about $250 million. Yeah, so, you know, I, I, just to touch on that, John, because uh, I always wondered about how real this uh, threat of losing this money was, number one. And number two, uh, I always was concerned about the fact that this the PPP Canada, who's holding the purse strings and deciding whether they're going to divvy this money out. And, and PPP Canada, I think, stands for private Partner. public partnership. Public private partnerships. And, and uh, so, okay, let me ask you about the PPP thing first, just so I understand, what is that body, what relationship do they have with the federal government? As far as I know, there is, the federal funding was, was, was in three dollars, three pockets, yeah. came out of three different sources, and about 83 million came from 3P Canada, yeah. and it applied specifically, as I understand it, to uh, Heartland, because that was where the uh, biosolids processing was going yeah. to take place. And they had a deadline that was different from the other funding sources. So the original, you know, we're going to lose the funding, we're going to lose the funding, only applied to the 83 million. But now the funding threat is for the whole enchilada, all half billion. Now how could it be that this organization, how could they have the you know, the jurisdiction to actually make that decision. Was that their decision or was it, was they, it the they Trudeau be, government made that decision? Who made that decision? About, about... The funding, the, whether the funding's going to, you know, the, the, we have a deadline, it's 500 some odd million. Who, who, I mean, how realistic is it? I have no idea. Yeah. I mean, if you didn't meet the deadline, if you, if you got started by, you know, we're supposed to be, you know, yeah. 2020. But if you had something rolling, you know, you had shovels in the ground yeah. and you're halfway there by 2020 and you needed another year or two, yeah. you know, like what government's going to come in and start to, and pull the money and or begin to fine you because you're two years late. So I'm, I'm just catching up on this issue because I'm, I'm trying to fit it in my brain cells of how this works. You and a lot of other people. And, and, you know, remember a couple of years ago, a bunch of bright people arrived on the scene and start talking about putting in these small tertiary treatment plants, <clears throat> sprinkling them all over the, uh, all over the region. They're all supposed to be very unobtrusive. Just you'd hardly tell whether they are in your neighborhood or not. A lot of them could be attached to pumping stations. They didn't cost a lot. You see, you could bring them in on big semi trucks and set them up, kind of plug and play kind of things, <laughs> and you'd get sort of a, you'd get a tertiary treatment for that segment of the system. And over time, from what I understood, you could actually get most of the 
uh, system, treat it to uh, tertiary, tertiary level. level. And uh, it didn't cost that much, and it was very unobtrusive. What happened to that idea? Is it still well, there? On, on, <clears throat> in theory, it's still on, uh, you know, it's still possible. Yeah. It'll be entirely up to the uh, new project board to decide the fate of uh, a distributed tertiary. You know, but the thing is so strange is because they're deciding on these locations of these big treatment plants that appear to be, are they secondary well, treatment? That's are the, they tertiary? Well, that's the, well, I mean, I guess they could be either in, yeah. in the sense of uh, the one at McLaughlin was originally going to be a centralized secondary for the whole region. Yeah. And then <clears throat> apparently at the last minute, they, I, I think it was Director Jensen went back and said, how much would it cost to bump it up to tertiary level? And I forget the, you know, it was an extra, I forget how much the extra it was. But the, the thing about the distributed system is it, it, it really makes good use of the existing infrastructure. As you mentioned, yeah. some is located on existing pump stations. And so when you take it, you know, for example, if you took advantage of Clover Point, um, then you've got an existing outfall and uh, you don't have to, you know, dig up Cook Street and across Bay Street. Well, even, even with these type of systems, you know, I'm not an engineer, but it seems to me, when you have a tertiary treatment, what comes out the other end? You could you could drain into a that's drainage the, system. That's the biggest, I think, for me. The biggest advantage of tertiary is you can you can discharge into what they call inbound waters. Yeah. You don't have to pump it up, you know, uh, a kilometer out to sea. And it can it can arrive at the ocean at its. Or you can own distribute pace. it on the you know you can distribute it into like a wetland, an artificial yeah. wetland. Uh, so you know the the options for getting rid of the uh, tertiary treated water are much easier because like you know if you're close to the ocean you can do it right there okay and are we supposed to take a lot of comfort now that <clears throat> they have this new expert panel the provincial expert panel i did glance at the names i didn't see any biologists did you see any experts in, in the <laughs> sense of having an extensive background and so in, this is in, it. in gonna... the design and building of wastewater treatment and yeah. resource recovery systems yeah i looked at it and i didn't see anybody i, I you know they have four people who came over two one elected representative from the CRD, yeah. um, one, uh, you know, one director. They have the chief uh, administrative officer from the, the CRD, and they have two people who were the chair and vice chair, respectively, I think, of yeah. the, the CTERRA commission. Okay, I'm gonna tell you the rest of my concerns. Um, I'm looking at the CRD, and I, I think we have to look at, you know, we have to look at what the heck happened in the last 10 years. They've been talking about the sewage treatment it's an ongoing saga. Uh, it's almost unbelievable where we are and how much money has been wasted. Sixty-five million. So, you know, anybody from the outside that's not from here would come and say, "Well, what's going on here? How come it's nothing's moving here?" And it seems to me that one of the problems is is the governance structure of regional governance here in in Victoria Region. And you're looking at the CRD that really doesn't have, they can't really trump in the municipalities and their decision making. Now where I'm from in New Brunswick, I'm from Kings County, New Brunswick, uh, a great old county about 250 years old or something, but that government is a regional government and when they want to put a road through the town, they do it. They just say, okay guys, we're going to widen this road, this is a regional artery, blah, 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 it's done. And the same thing with all the other, you know, policing and waste treatment and all these other things. They just made those decisions. There was never any controversy. We'd read it in the paper. Or sometimes it would be, you know, your regular politics. Mm -hmm. But there was always a way to access the, situ the system. There was, it was understood what the, what the parameters of the decisions were, and the public knew what the role was. But in this case, I don't even, I don't know what my role is in this. Well, I can't remember anybody running uh, uh, for uh, election and uh, the, the city councilors say you elect me and I'm going to get this type of system built. I want this type of sewage treatment system built. I don't think anybody ran on those on those parameters. So how does the public feel that they can get engaged, you know? Well, I mean, they can get engaged, but uh, as you point out, usually they get engaged when it comes down to what's going to or not going to go in their backyard. Yeah. And <clears throat> pardon me, one of the um I think uh, good things is as I said, this project board now has control of zoning. So you reference back to good old Kings County, New Brunswick. Yeah. They're going to have essentially the same power as the people you referred to back in New Brunswick because yeah. they say they have legislative pieces that can, can more But don't you think that we shouldn't uh, have just a structure like that in British Columbia? I'm surprised we don't have it. 
Uh, I'm sure other jurisdictions and other cities are suffering through the same problems making these decisions. What is holding back British Columbia, the government of British Columbia, say, yeah, we're going to form this third level of government. It's uh, well established worldwide. Uh, it seems to work for us. And then we'd have sewage treatment underneath the, their, in their jurisdiction. And all of a sudden, I think this would all become very much, much more simpler, in my view. Yeah. Well, I think that you have, I think that um, I recognize the fact that a, a, a wastewater treatment uh, plant is, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a particular type of large facility, yeah, right? Yeah. Do you want one next door to you? No. Do you want a nuclear plant next door to you? No. So there's probably a handful of large developments that nobody wants anywhere yeah. near them. So yeah, so a, a King's, a New Brunswick County uh, approach to making sure that those went through would be appropriate. But yeah. in terms of the way that it's currently structured, it seems to work for you know, many of the projects that are put before it, but not on this one. Okay, I got one more, one more beef. I can get the air, all my, all my criticism. <clears throat> you know, uh, we went to some of these forums. I went, I went to one, I went to two actually, uh, when they were talking about sewage treatment. And I, I came into those rooms and uh, uh, when you started to really look at who was all there. Uh, Which uh, ones were these though? Were I they? went down to the one down at the, uh, at the museum and the, the big uh, okay, yeah. big room there. And there were so many either politicians that all had their interests oh, yeah. in what they want to see happen. And then they had probably just as many public relations people there smoozing at every table. When we went to give our, our two cents worth of what we thought we should happen, the, the, the person wouldn't write down what I was telling them. And there was never any real criticism. Now, do you think that this new maneuver by the by the government is this just another public relations ploy that they're using? Do they? I think you'll have to wait to see what sort of communication begins to come out from the project board. As you point out, much of what went down as public engagement uh, was nowhere close to public engagement because basically what was coming out was propaganda. So you can't. As a, mem as a citizen, you can't make an informed yeah. decision if you don't have the necessary information to make an informed decision. Well, it's also, it's just confusing. <clears throat> uh, you well, know. It's, it's, not, it's confusing, but it's extremely manipulative. Oh, it, it, in the as worst As you said, sense. you sat there and said things, didn't get written down, didn't get written down. And then when somebody said the right thing, they got written down. Yeah. That's manipulation. <laughs> and it's just as soon as you were talking outside these parameters that they were setting, they maybe large you. treatment plants or whatever they're talking about, which seemed to me that's the only option that was being presented to me. Uh, you couldn't say, no, I think this is fundamentally wrong. I think we should go to these distributed tertiary treatment plants and all that. And do you, now, uh, the final question is, do you think we could ever get back, really seriously back to talking about these small treatment plants, or is that just something that's gone by now? I don't think it's gone by. I mean, in, again, in theory, technically, it's still out there. You may only end up with two, right? Yeah. One at, you know, one at, or three, you may yeah. end up with a smaller number of tertiary treatment plants. Yeah. But uh, tertiary on a distributed basis is, I think, still on the table. Well, how about even getting into these smaller plants that they were talking about that were back well into the system that uh, weren't even supplying these major centers uh, for, for treatment? Do you think we can ever get back to that idea? Well, that was floated, I think, as, you know, as the right plan, R-I-T-E. Yeah. And it was the brainchild of uh, Mayor Atwell, of Sanage, yeah. Director Atwell. And it basically came down to about eight small facilities okay. distributed around the region. Um, and the plants would vary in size in accordance with what land yeah. was, a, was um, available around the site. So you'd have a larger one at Clover as opposed to Macaulay because Macaulay's a That's restricted right. site and so on. Well, look, you, you cleared some of this stuff up. You got all that other work to do in your own show. I'm sure you can... You, you, further clarifications and congratulations on your show. It's uh, very interesting to watch and oh, I love uh, you interviewing your guests. Um, and I just want to thank everybody for, for watching and uh, that's it for Citizens Forum for this week and we'll see you next week.